welcome Dr. R.K. Agarwal for sharing his UHV implementation experiences. We will have 20 minute session from him. Welcome you, sir. So good afternoon and uh, thank you very much uh, to the organizers for uh, giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts and our experiences in this, uh, I guess, very eminent and distinguished forum for this leadership development conclave. And also thank you to all the people in the audience for bravely coming and sitting after lunch and I think what I could make out as a snack session. So I think over the next 20 minutes, uh, I'll try and uh, take you through our journey, starting from the time when we were actually uh, unaware of uh, the importance, the necessity, and also the role of uh, human values in our education system, and how we progressed to our present state where uh, the human values and the value education is not just a part of our curriculum, but I would say is totally integrated into every facet, every activity, into the entire ecosystem of our college. So uh, I would start with my tenure. Our college is uh, approximately 25 years old. Uh, just a minute, I'm unable to move my slide. My slide is not moving. Give me half a minute. Uh, the slide not moving forward. Okay, so um, our college is 25 years old and I took charge in 2004. And at that time, of course, like any other institution, our uh, main focus was on academic excellence, results, all around uh, development of students. And to a large extent, uh, we were also very heavily focused on to employability through a number of uh, industrial uh, associations in our institution, as you can see on this slide. And uh, frankly speaking, we were really very, very happy with what we were doing. I mean, we were one of the best colleges in the state and we were happy with ourselves. But uh, around 2009, this entire scenario changed and uh, a new transformation started when I underwent a couple of uh, short workshops on value education at Ghaziabad. And subsequently, I had an opportunity to be exposed to the work at IIIT Hyderabad by Professor Sangal. And also I attended a three-day workshop by Sri Ganesh Bhagariaji. And that is the time that I and some of us uh, in our university, we realized as to what we were missing actually. And, and I, I would personally think that that realization that whatever we were doing in our education system till then, there was a deficiency, there was a certain requirement to include um, you know, the human values, the professional ethics into that system. And after that, th this was the turning point for us. And uh, I, it, it is very important that we realize the present system, what is deficient and the necessity and the need to change it and incorporate uh, value education into our system. So as this slide shows, uh, of course, all of us were focused on academic excellence. And our education system as it is, is uh, overemphasizing our skills. And we always talk about how to do, but we do not know what is worthwhile to do. And actually this lack of understanding leads to a misconception amongst all of us that physical facilities are uh, necessary as well as sufficient for happiness and prosperity. And because of this uh, misconception, there are problems of internal conflict, contradictions, stress at the personal level. And uh, as we all know, heavy degradation in our relationships within family, with friends, with our colleagues, and also as a faculty with our students. And it has also led to increased aggression, reactiveness, corruption, and so on. So basically what we realized at that point of time is that the education, the way we were looking at it, had failed to fulfill the fundamental aspirations of happiness, prosperity, peace, harmony, and a just society. 
So what was done in our university at that point of time in 2009 by our great vice chancellor, Professor Premrat, he took a very bold decision and introduced a compulsory foundation course in universal human values, which was a non-credit course. Uh, we adopted it, of course, being part of the university, but uh, we faced many concerns and challenges, which I'd like to share because I'm sure the institutions that are starting on this journey now would possibly face similar concerns and challenges. So firstly, we were not too sure that uh, human values could be taught as a course. We always thought uh, that you know the values are more uh, transformational, not instructional in nature. We also were not sure whether the students will accept it and its effectiveness and impact on them. And actually speaking, initially the student attendance was rather poor in these classes and their involvement was very, very superficial. We also uh, had a tough time preparing the engineering faculty for uh, conducting this course. So most of the faculty, engineering faculty were not interested in going to IIT Kanpur for the eight days foundation uh, faculty development program. And I recollect uh, even the ones who went over there were not really comfortable and confident of teaching the students uh, the human values and professional ethics codes. The main reason was that they had to uh, sort of uh, change their teaching methodology because teaching value education required, uh, you know, sort of making proposals and facilitating exploration and experiential validation. So they had to change their role from being a sage on the stage as we normally do in uh, technical teaching to being a guide by the side. So nevertheless, we uh, carried on with our journey and uh, we overcame these because then we realized that just conducting a course or including a course is not enough to make the desired change in the conduct and behavior of the faculty and students as is sort of expected. So I would think that uh, doing the courses and workshop to give a very crude example is like adding sugar to a cup of coffee or milk. So whereby the sugar can settle down, but the milk will not get sweetened. So we realize that unless we churn that sugar, and, and, uh, the, the sweetness will come into the entire milk. So similarly for value education, it was not just adding or doing a particular curriculum course. What was required is actually to incorporate the values into the entire system to make it an integral part of all facets and activities in the college. So we embarked at that point of time on a holistic human education concept like in Gurukuls. And equally important, like uh, the same example of milk and sugar, if the milk is warmed up, then it can absorb more sugar. So that is equivalent to creating a supportive environment. So then we believed that unless we create a supportive environment, which reinforces what is learned in the course, the values will not truly get absorbed. In addition, we also did create among students a responsibility towards nature and towards their civic and social responsibilities. So as far as the courses and workshops are concerned, the first and very important step that we took was that including myself, we exposed all our deans and heads of departments to this eight days uh, UHV uh, faculty development program, which is now equivalent to UHV2. And the benefit was that the, we got totally aligned and we realized at, at the leadership level, the importance and the role that the value education can play. And with the result, we got active support from the management, from the leadership for all the value education activities. Simple things like uh, we all then made uh, the UHV2 compulsory for all our faculty members. I'd like to share that in our college, any new joining faculty has to do this UHV2 program in the first one year if he or she wants the probation to be closed and the implement to be given. So with the result now in our college, almost all the faculty members, 245 faculty members, have undergone the UHV2 faculty development program and are all capable of conducting this uh, second year course of UHV2 for students. In addition, we embarked on doing senior level programs. And as of today, we have 
25 faculty members who have done UHV3 faculty development program, and eight faculty of ours have done even UHV4 FTP program. Because the college is not just students and faculty, we also made all our non-teaching staff, you know, the administrative staff, the lab staff, to do a three days short-term workshop in value education. And that also proved to be very useful and successful. So as of today, with our effort over the last uh, 10 or 12 years, we got seven fully qualified resource persons in our college and also five potential resource persons. And this kind of a resource within the college is very useful. If you want to expand the value education related activities in the college, because without this, unless we have the capability of in-house conducting these programs, we cannot expect all our faculty to undergo this course. It is very difficult to depute them to do the course elsewhere. So having a good pool of resource persons within the institution, I think is also a very important step. Secondly, as far as the students are concerned, like all of you are possibly doing, from 2018, we started this uh, student induction program. This UHV2, Understanding Harmony and Ethical Human Conduct, we are doing uh, since the beginning, 2009. For the first two years, it was a non-credit course. From 2011, it became a credit course in our university. In addition, now uh, we also do three elective courses for students. Uh, UHV3 is for the third year students. UHV4 and UHV5 are for the fourth year students. These are open electives. And I'm very happy to share that the enthusiasm and the interest of students contrary to our belief and expectation is very high for these programs. In my college, out of about 1,200 students in third and fourth year, about 400 odd students opted for these electives, the elective UHV3 and UHV4. As I mentioned, to have a good pool of resource persons in the college is essential if you want to expand the activities. It is a little long, but I think very systematic and very structured process to create, to develop these resource persons. So to start with, for ensuring understanding within oneself, the resource person must undergo all the three levels of the universal human values uh, faculty development programs, at least up to UHV3. Also, preferably one month of uh, morning workshops conducted by Ganesh Bagaria Ji and his particular association. After having learned this, to be able to conduct the course and for express for express for ensuring the expression with others, what uh, is generally done is first the faculty is made an observer in one of the eight-day faculty development programs. After that, uh, he or she works as a coordinator, and then a co-facilitator where uh, they take one or two modules under observation and supervision of the actual resource person, and subsequently, of course, they develop. And this pool, I would recommend, you know, if all of us have at least three to four people who are fully competent of training the trainer, then we can expand it to all faculty members. I'll just like to share now some of the additional efforts in addition to the course which we did to make this uh, very effective. So uh, we have weekly meetings for uh, all interested faculty members, as well as the fortnightly meetings for our staff conducted by the resource persons. And these meetings through brainstorming, through cross-fertilization of our ideas, it aids in deeper understanding of the value education. Similarly, uh, for the faculty who are taking the course during that particular period, our resource persons, they have a weekly uh, book reading for about one and a half hours so that they can clarify their doubts and effectively conduct this program for students. Every department of ours has a seminar once in a week. So what they do is in every month, like every fourth seminar has to be on universal human value related topics. Similarly, uh, in our college, about three years back, we started weekend workshop for students. So we have 10 hours evening workshops on understanding relationships and mutually fulfilling communication. Till now we have conducted about 24 of these workshops. 
And I'm happy to share, you know, that the first time we did this workshop in the evening from 4.30 to 6.30 in the hostels, we had about 10, 15 students who actually survived the entire week. But today when we offer this workshop, there is a queue and we actually go to set. Similarly, we do a 44 hours workshop on conscious engineering. And this we start on a Saturday. So Saturday and Sunday are full two days and then in the evening for five days. So this 44 hour workshop we do for students. In addition, our resource persons are also doing workshop for the family members as well as for our alumni. And very frequently we have invited lectures from spiritual leaders and other experts in the field. To be able to do these activities, what I've shown in the previous slide, it requires a dedicated, sincere team. So we have a value education cell in our college, and you can see that uh, it is headed by Professor Parasha and the coordinator is Dr. Gopal Babu. We got about uh, nine to 10 faculty members in this from all departments, as well as about 10 students are very active members of our value education cell. We started this value education cell in 2017. And in 2019, we were designated as the regional nodal center for our university to support other institutions in developing the value education. The responsibilities, uh, I think uh, almost all activities related to value education, human values is done in the campus by our value education cell, starting from this sharing sessions for faculty and staff, as I mentioned, evening or weekend workshops. They also conduct FTPs, not just for our faculty, but for faculty of all institutions within our university and at times for AICT, AICT deputes them to conduct uh, these FTPs at other locations as well. They are responsible for smooth conduct of the student induction program. We, they prepare a common uh, uh, class material for everyone who's teaching the UHV courses to students, set question papers, and also they coordinate activities of, uh, we have a nature club and the various activities we celebrate Earth Day. We have Shamdan activities. We have activities where students plant trees and each one is responsible to look after his own tree. We also have a herbal garden and uh, a sustainable production center where we grow aloe vera and produce our own soap, which is very popular amongst our student and faculty. And uh, recently, of course, we also enrolled and we started a chapter of UN Academic Impact in our college. And we would attempt now to align ourselves with the goals of this particular chapter, which is peace, harmony, and a sustainable uh, society. Some pictures of the activities of our value education cell. The first one is eight days orientation program. As I mentioned, we keep doing it regularly. Orientation program for all heads of departments, myself and deans. Our weekly sessions with the faculty members, workshops. Some of uh, our shamdan as part of our student program. And this is a picture of the herbal garden that our students have developed. Another very interesting program we had is, we had a meet uh, with the alumni, not the college alumni, but the alumni who are part, actively part of the value education cell. We invited and you can see um, almost everyone who is working in corporates in the, in the NCR and nearby regions, they all came. They shared their experiences. And I'm very happy to report, you can see on the left side that almost everyone had a very positive feedback regarding the impact these value education programs had on him as a career person. As I mentioned earlier, that just doing the course at whatever level is not enough. So we have to have a supportive environment to reinforce these learnings. And we made a very dedicated and structured effort to create that environment. So first and foremost, we emphasize human values, ethics, work culture, and a positive attitude. All our management, all our administrative, all our academic policies are 100% uniform and transparent. We have a totally unbiased and a fair approach. We have very little zero tolerance for any misconduct. We reward honesty and integrity. And of course, it is essential to have complete purity in academic system. So unless we do it in the entire, all activities, it is very, very difficult for 
people to learn uh, whatever they learn in the human value courses and see that the environment is doing something else. So a supportive environment is essential for its proper absorption. As far as uh, the nature is concerned, um, uh, our efforts, we have a very eco-friendly, trash-free green campus. We have a very scientific uh, trash management with the eco-waste management company. We make our own compost. Similarly, our entire campus has got about 22 rainwater harvesting wells. Every drop of rainwater goes back to Mother Earth and our water table is restored. Similarly, all our terraces are covered with solar panels. We generate approximately 330 kilowatts of energy as well as uh, uh, all the hot water in the uh, hostels is through the solar panels itself. So these kind of activities do promote the students to have respect for the nature, to preserve the natural resources. As far as uh, inculcating uh, civic and social responsibility among students, we involve ourselves very actively, very regularly in many activities. Some of these are shown here. We run an annual blood donation camp and our college has record of collecting or donating up to 650 units of blood in a single day. We run regular skill development programs for the students from nearby villages on our own, as well as under various government schemes like DDU, GKY, PMKY, etc. We have adopted a school in Kazipura village. It is a cooperation school and we not only provide resources, physical resources to that school like toilets, make boundary wall for them, fans and so on. Our students also go there and uh, take part in some activities. We also run a primary school in our campus for the children of our labor. We give them a free lunch, uniform, and uh, of course, these are migratory labor, so it is not as if people graduate, but any child of any labor between the age group of five to 15, we enroll him in this school. We have adopted, a, fully adopted a refugee, Hindu refugee camp in Adarsh Nagar in Delhi. And uh, we regularly provide them kits of daily necessity. During the two years of COVID, we fully supported them with rations. And we've also created two rooms for them, one a sewing center and the second a classroom. Uh, very recently, our value education cell also organized a workshop for 15 days, two hours each in the Dasla lane for the inmates. And I do believe from the feedback that it was extremely successful and useful in their mental and emotional state and sort of to get them reintegrated into the society once they get out of the jail. We're also part of the Unnad Bharat Abhiyan, whereby we have adopted uh, five villages nearby our college. So as you can see, the integrated approach to totally integrate human values into every facet of our activities has transformed honestly has really transformed the way our students, our faculty behave and conduct themselves. So I'll just go over some of the changes that I've noticed. In students, it is certainly tangible. It is also quantifiable. So first and foremost is the focused and sincere approach in academics and other spheres, which we could assess from our own position. So today we are leading, we are a leading institution in the university as far as the results are concerned. We got certain unbeatable records in academics, which are difficult to beat, and the same in sports, cultural, and literary events. There have been a tangible change in their behavior in the sense of the punctuality and attendance in classes has improved significantly. And we have a very systematic way of rewarding and penalizing punctuality. Every day in the morning, it is taken, and every day we give awards for to draw lots among students who come first and so on. Uh, there has been a marked reduction in uh, offenses, uh, minor offenses like uh, bunking classes or getting into the hostels late. And of course, major offenses like involving in drugs, drinking. There's been a drastic reduction. Uh, in general, I can say that, you know, the work for the proctorial or discipline committee is reduced. So people are moving from uh, forced or imposed discipline to uh, self-discipline now. We also noticed and uh, very tangible, uh, very noticeable, strong mentorship among senior students. So our students now are very willingly conducting 
uh, sessions called mentorship classes. Third year students are conducted for second year in uh, important topics for the week students. Our students also conduct training for the new admitted students who don't have a computer science background in C++ and Java and so on. We also noticed a very high level of involvement in various uh, cultural and technical societies in our college, as well as now we have very many things managed in the institution wholly and solely by the students. Like all our hostel libraries are managed by students. We have nothing, we have no interference in that. Some of our centers of excellence, big data centers, software development center are totally managed by students. In addition, all our centers of excellence have a student ambassador. We have noticed in the hostels, uh, there is a system of uh, fining for electricity and food wastage. There's been a reduction in that. Very positive feedback from the corporates who have always told us that our students are not just professionally competent, but also they are better uh, team workers, they, they, they perform better. And of course, our campus is lagging free. Similarly, the impact uh, of our efforts onto the faculty, it is mostly, I mean, unlike students, I won't say that it is quantifiable. It is mostly through the feedback from the faculty members, as well as our own perception. So most people report that uh, subsequent to these FTPs and further activities uh, of value education, there's been a significant improvement in their temperament and reduction in stress level. I'd also like to share that this transformation is uh, contagious. In the sense in the department, if you see two or three faculty who are linked with the value education cell, and then they see the equanimity, the more uh, higher levels of peace, then they also get interested and motivated and inspired to join those programs. Our faculty now willingly accept any additional tasks and responsibilities, the sense of belongingness to the institution has increased and it is visible in our very high stability in our institution. It has also improved the interpersonal relationship, which in a long run gives rise to team spirit and improves performance at work. Healthy student-teacher relationship. And I think the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Uh, all the faculty members, most of the faculty members, have asked us to conduct workshops for their family members. It just proves that they benefited and they liked uh, these workshops. Some of the activities that we do beyond our college as a regional nodal center, and also to support uh, this particular drive by the AICT now. So, so far we have conducted 18 universal human values uh, level two FTPs in our institution. And most of these have been self-funded. And we have trained about 590 faculty members and 120 students in two workshops. Similarly, we also conduct uh, UHV3 workshops. We have done three of these for 94 faculty members and two refresher uh, FTPs, which are no more now in vogue. Uh, we conducted one level four FTP also for 21 faculty members. And of course, our resource persons are regularly being deported, deputed by NCCIP and AICTE for conducting FTPs at various locations in the country, as well as at IITs and IMs. This slide just shows uh, that many of our faculty are involved in a national effort through the AICTE. Many of us, including myself, and Upasna, ma'am, they are we are members of the National Committee on Universal Human Values. Uh, most of these faculty you see out here are some way or the other involved with NCCIP in various capacities. Some of our faculty are also part and coordinators of this Madhya Pradesh uh, UHV program for the school children. Our coordinator, Gopal Babu, you can see right on top, is also a member of the expert committee for uh, finalizing the model curriculum for AICT. And he's been recently also awarded uh, outstanding contribution uh, to the national development by the Alumni Association at IIT Delhi from where he has done the PhD as well. So this is uh, the extent of uh, our effort to uh, contribute to the propagation of value education in our country. 
uh, as far as future plans are concerned, uh, we, in the long run, our dream, our aspiration is to establish our college as a living uh, model for values. It is, it is my honest intention that we should produce not just competent professionals, but also life-ready individuals who will be good in every role that they play, good father, good mother, good son, good brother, good employee. We want to start research in uh, holistic models and technology. We are planning to become a university. Right now, we are an affiliated college. And when that happens, we will certainly start uh, uh, major and minor uh, degrees in universal human values. We also someday would be a national resource center in universal human values. We do have some publications already. Emergence is a magazine which we published two years back and we would be renewing another issue of that. Plus we, we are starting a journal of holistic development. And many of our faculty are writing papers on human values. We want to introduce when we become a university, at least one course on Indian knowledge system in every semester. And uh, we would also want in the long run to increase uh, programs for schools in our area, for other NGOs. And like I said, we did for the jail. We, we want to propagate uh, the values, the ethics, uh, good work culture and a positive attitude. So I think at the end, I would say that our effort to integrate the human values and the value education in all facets, all activities of our institution into the entire ecosystem, in my opinion, has played a very beneficial, very transformational role into our present status as one of the best institutions in UP. So even though there is a long way for us to go, it is never the end of the journey in this path. I would say that we have by and large succeeded into our mission which we embarked on in 2009 with the starting of that one single course. And I always like to end by giving uh, the definition of success, which I like the most. So to us, success is to laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people, to earn the appreciation of honest critics, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, and to leave the world a bit better. So this is what we believe is having succeeded. Thank you very much for listening patiently to me. If there are any questions, clarifications, I'll be too happy to take them. Agarwalji, SD Charan. Sir, uh, good evening. So nice to hear your voice after a long good time. Good evening, good evening. So very uh, nice and very informative uh, it was. Uh, we could understand the extent of USV. We all could understand the extent of USV up to which one can go, one institute can go, and one university can go. So really, it was very much helpful to all of us. And we expect uh, from this university and has a uh, potential to develop uh, to the level where we, they can go. Vice Chancellor is also very much uh, excited to go for it. Uh, so we all are very much thankful to you for this. And of course, uh, uh, thanking is very small, uh, only a token. Otherwise, your contribution uh, is uh, really appreciable. And next time, of course, we expect you to be a part of offline wherever it's required. That's what we expect. Your ex uh, offline presence is also, uh, we feel, very important so that people can have a uh, first-hand information about USP and uh, really uh, not USB as a course, but USB as a living, living model. So that's all. Now I request uh, all uh, members so if they have any question to ask. So thank you very much, uh, Charan sir, to start with. And as you mentioned, uh, I'll be very happy to be physically present in all your great programs. Equally important, I think more than presence or uh, my talk, I invite um, anyone and everyone to visit our campus and to feel uh, to feel the vibration, to feel the environment that is totally changed because of our integration of uh, human values into our system, actually. So I invite uh, anyone and everyone who's interested who can spare some time to pay a visit and be our guest in our campus. 
sir wherever i go i uh, give the example or asking them to go to uh, gajabad and see the college yes sir so thank you sir. you you will have a number of guests you be prepared for that thank you of course you always welcome sir. thank you sir uh, i am dr kamla sipsel coordinator of anna university uh, your presentation is very useful for us and it gives a lot of idea about how to proceed with the uhp courses and uh, uh, thank you very much sir for your presentation it gives an, a very good idea of what are the works we have to uh, concentrate and how to proceed that uh, information was very useful sir thank you very much sir thank you ma'am so thank you sir thank you thank you very much okay sir thank you very much namaste